Hello everybody and welcome back for lesson five of our watch repair series. Today we're going to be talking about how to safely remove and install a balance wheel and pallet fork. My name is Alex and I make videos on watch repair, service, and troubleshooting. So if this is something you're interested in, let's jump right in. Removing and installing balance wheels is one of those tasks that you need to get comfortable with in order to progress to the next level in watch repair. It's also one of those things that you can do to really fuck up the movement you're working on. And unfortunately, all the repair techniques on the balance wheel are all going to be fairly advanced and require special tooling. But no worries, I'm going to give you a few guidelines and tips on how to master this right now. Let's take a look. One of the most important things you can learn in watch repair is how to prevent a problem before it actually happens. When you're disassembling a watch movement, taking out the balance wheel and pallet fork at the beginning of your watch disassembly is a good practice, which could prevent you from damaging the balance wheel in your disassembly. As always, the first thing we want to do before we start working on the movement is to let down the power. Again, that is done by holding the crown wheel in your fingertips and then releasing the click from the ratchet wheel, letting the crown wheel spin slowly in a controlled manner between your fingertips until all the power is let out of the mainspring. When all the power is out of the mainspring, the balance wheel will stop. Start off by making sure that the movement is mounted into the movement holder so that the balance cock is in a place where you'll have an unobstructed access to the point where you're going to be picking it up. As an example, you would not want to have the balance cock sitting here. Some position in this area would be the best. Now the balance is held in by one screw and a couple steady pins under the balance cock. Before you remove the balance, look for the slot between the balance cock and the main plate. Since steady pins provide the tight alignment that a balance cock needs, you probably won't be able to get your tweezers between them. Yeah, you could probably force your tweezers in between them, but remember, part of learning the process is knowing what not to do. This is where you can insert your screwdriver to separate the balance cock from the main plate. So let's go ahead and remove the screw. Insert your screwdriver into the slot and just give it a slight twist to separate the balance cock from the main plate. So the first guideline would be to pick up the, the balance cock well into your tweezers. When you pick up a screw, you're basically holding it by the very tip of the tweezers. Here you want to make sure you have a solid grip. Under the balance wheel, there's a jewel called the impulse jewel that is sitting in the pallet fork slot. Now when you remove the balance wheel, you want to release that impulse jewel in the safest possible way. So guideline number two is just to lift up the balance wheel a little bit and then turn the movement holder, which will release the impulse pin from the slot of the pallet fork, then tip up your movement and lift it out. The key here is not to stretch out the hairspring from its normal hanging position. But if you pull too hard on the hairspring, you'll stretch it out, effectively taking the hairspring out of flat which will definitely negatively affect the running of the movement. The pivots of both the balance wheel and the pallet fork are the smallest in the movement and extreme care is required. So now that it's out, what do you do with it? Well, there's a tool called a balance tack, which is just a tapered rod that's in a base that some people like to store their balance assembly on. I prefer just to lay it down, then slip my tweezers under the balance wheel and on top of the balance cock and gently flip it over, making sure that my pivot is in the upper jewel, just like that. And now we'll move it over to the parts tray. Okay, now let's remove the pallet fork. So the pallet fork is held on by two screws and it also has two steady pins under it. So let's start by removing the screws. And then just like we did with the balance cock bridge, it's a good idea to put your screwdriver under the bridge to separate it away from the 
pivot on the pallet fork. Then lift the pallet bridge straight up. Now take extreme caution removing the pallet fork as well. You want to make sure when you pick it up that you pick it up by the pallet fork shaft or arm, whatever you want to call it. Pick it up straight up in the air. Now you might have noticed that the escape wheel spun a little bit. That is just a little bit of energy that's still left in the mainspring. That's nothing to worry about. What you don't want to do is have the mainspring at a half wind and pull it off. Then you have to worry about it breaking the jewels. Now, I know this might sound obvious to some, but when you're putting your parts in the tray, don't just drop them in. Lay them in very gently. All right, so let's take a look at the pallet fork. I'm not really going to get into a long explanation of how the escapement works at this point. That's something that we'll discuss when we get into the inspection videos, but I want to give you just an overview. So we're looking at the pallet fork as you would look at it into the movement. This pallet jewel is the entry jewel. This pallet jewel is the exit jewel. Then we have our pivots. We have our pallet fork shaft or arm. We have this area, which is called the slot. And then we have our pallet fork horns. These are part of the safety system of the escapement. This area right here is where the impulse jewel sits and goes in and out of as the watch oscillates. Now, when we look at the pallet fork from the underside, you might notice that the jewels are held in with a material called shellac. Shellac is used as the adhesive to hold the jewels to the pallet fork because once this is warmed up, the shellac softens and the pallet jewels can actually be moved in and out to make adjustments in the escapement. Now, as we look at the underside of the balance wheel, this part is called the safety roller, and the safety roller holds the impulse jewel. This is the jewel that goes in and out of the slot on the pallet fork as the wheel rotates back and forth. All right, let's go ahead and put it back together. Now, just as a side note, I want to point out that you can't install the powertrain with the pallet fork and balance wheel installed. So you're always going to install the powertrain first with the pallet fork and the balance wheel after that's already been put in. And the reason is you need to be able to uh, have the powertrain spin freely while you're installing the bridges. So we'll start by laying the pallet fork in position, lay it in its lower jewel. Now you bring in your pallet fork bridge, lining up your steady pins and screw holes and gently lay it into place. Now while applying just a minimal amount of pressure on the plate, Check that your upper pallet jewel is in position. You should see it rotating just like this. Now, while maintaining a small amount of pressure on the pallet fork bridge, drop in your first screw, tightening it down just enough until you hit resistance. Now you can put in your second screw. Again, screwing it down just till you hit and feel the resistance, and then check your pallet fork again. What you're looking for is just to make sure that the pallet pivots are located in their jewel holes. Now you can go ahead and finish screwing your screws down. Now add a couple lines to the mainspring, and now you're checking to make sure that the escape wheel and pallet fork are operating as they should. Now, before we install the balance wheel, we want to move the pallet fork to the top. Now, pick your balance wheel up, holding the balance wheel in the cock. Make a note of the position of the impulse jewel and flip it over. 
I went ahead and made a mark uh, with a little piece of whiteout uh, on where the impulse jewel is in relationship to the balance wheel. So the idea here is that we want the impulse jewel to come in from the top side of the pallet fork so that when we turn the balance, the impulse jewel slides into the pallet fork slot. So we take our balance wheels, we slide it under the second wheel, roughly in its position, and then turn the movement holder. And gently lay the balance cock in position. Slowly maneuver it so that the hole, the screw hole is lined up. Now, sometimes when you're really close, you can just give the movement holder a little shake and the balance wheel will fall right in position. And now we have life. Now you can put the screw on. It's also worth to note that one of the biggest problems you'll face when you're putting the balance wheel in is actually moving the pallet fork to the other uh, side of the banking pin. Um, what happens when the balance wheel drops into position, the impulse pin will actually be outside the pallet fork horns. And what you'll notice is the balance wheel will spin briefly, but then it comes to an abrupt stop. Basically, what that means is the impulse pin is not in the slot of the pallet fork. So you just have to take it back off and then move the pallet fork back up to the top and then try it again. When you're servicing a watch movement, there's going to be plenty of times where you need to get a balance wheel rotating when you don't have power on it. Go out and get yourself one of these little puffers. Um, there's generic ones. There's a, this is the Bergeron 4657. And you use this to blow little puffs of air onto the balance wheel to get it rotating. Now, if you don't have one of these, you can also use a fine tip artist brush. And you use this to flick the balance wheel to get it moving. If you don't have an artist brush, you can go down to any big box store or hardware store, buy a $1 paint brush and cut all the bristles off, but one or two, and use that to flick the balance wheel to get it moving. If you can't do that, just take a piece of peg wood and tape a couple pieces from a broom on it and use that to flick it. But for the love of God, whatever you do, don't flick it with your finger, okay? And another thing that you definitely don't want to do is blow on the balance wheel with your breath to get it moving. All that's doing is putting moisture on the balance spring, and that's going to cause it to rust. It's a total noob move. Get you a blower. Get you a paintbrush. Just for whatever you do, don't flick it with your finger. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this one. I just want to send a shout out to my good friend, the bearded watchmaker over on his YouTube channel. He's laying down some really nice restoration videos. So if you like that kind of stuff, and I think you do, I'll leave a link in the description on how to get to his channel, or you can just look up the bearded watchmaker. As always, my friends, if you have any questions, comments, or video suggestions, Please leave them below in the comment section. And until next time, we're out of here.